Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to install OpenVPN on Raspberry Pi using PyVPN. Now PyVPN is pretty much a script that runs and it sets up OpenVPN on your Raspberry Pi or WireGuard for that matter um, fairly easily because it pretty much brings you through all the steps that are required uh, and by the end of it, you should be able to create a profile so you can access your local resources from anywhere in the world. So like I said a little earlier, you can also set up WireGuard using PyVPN, and I have a tutorial up for that. So I will leave a pop-up now with that video, or I will leave a link in the description with written instructions so that you can go and check out those. Uh, but the idea is that you can do either. So check out both of them before you actually go ahead and install OpenVPN and you know you can kind of pick whichever one you'd prefer. So before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I have full written instructions for everything in the description of the video. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run a command to install PyVPN. Now this will go through, it will update your Raspberry Pi if necessary, and it's going to guide you through the entire installation process. So once that's done running and it's ready, it's going to bring you to a screen and it's going to ask you to set up a static IP address. So this is very important because you need to be able to open a, uh, a port on your router. You need to port forward UDP port 1194 to your Raspberry Pi at the end of this tutorial. And that just allows you to access this VPN server anywhere in the world, basically outside of your network. So this is very important because you need to ensure that you're opening the port to the correct device and that IP address isn't going to change. So if you can set a DHCP reservation on your router, that's the best way that you could do this. Meaning that you're setting it up on your router, it's never going to change because your router is never going to try to hand out a different IP address. If you can't do that, you can try and set it up here. The one disclaimer that they give you is that they can't guarantee that your DHCP server, for most people at your router, isn't going to try and hand out this IP address to a different device. So while this is not the recommended approach, since you're going to be running this VPN server most likely 24-7, it's not really a problem. So if you've set a DHCP reservation in your router, you can select yes. If you haven't, you can select no, and it's going to guide you through the uh, static IP address setup. You're then going to be prompted for a local user. So for the majority of people, it's the default Pi user. I'm just going to leave this as default, but if you have a different user outside of the Pi user, you can go and select them here. After that, it's going to bring you to another screen that asks you to install WireGuard or OpenVPN. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at OpenVPN, so you can select OpenVPN and proceed. You're then going to be prompted where PyVPN is going to show you a bunch of default settings. So generally, for probably 95% of people, these settings are fine. You can leave everything as default. Uh, for some people, you're going to have to uh, you know, potentially want to change the protocol from UDP to TCP or something different. So if these settings have to be changed, you can do so here. If not, you're probably better off just leaving them as default and proceeding. So like I said a little earlier, we will be using UDP. Uh, and those settings that you just set pretty much confirm that. Um, this is going to show you the port that you have to port forward on your router uh, to your Raspberry Pi. So a default is 1194. For probably 99% of people, this is fine. Uh, certain people have port conflicts when they are trying to access this from uh, work networks or hotel networks or stuff like that. But generally, 1194 is going to be fine for everybody. If you want to change that port, this is where you would do it you're then going to be asked to set your DNS provider. So if you're using a local DNS server, if you set up PyHole or AdGuard Home, I have videos for those if you're interested in uh, setting those up. But if you're using one of those, you'll select Custom, and then you're going to type in the IP address of that uh, PyHole, or I shouldn't say PyHole, really, it's your local DNS server. If you haven't set up a local DNS server, you're going to have to use a public provider. So I generally use Google, but you can use Cloudflare or you can use whatever you want. Just go through the list and pick your favorite provider and then you can move on to the next step. So the next step is going to ask you if you're going to be accessing this server by using your public IP address or a DNS name. So your public IP address, you can use this if you do not have a dynamic IP address. So if your IP address never changes, if it's static, 
um, you can use this first option here. But the majority of people need to use a DNS entry and you need to set up dynamic DNS to do this. So I have a tutorial up on how you can set up DuckDNS if you're interested in setting up DDNS. So pick the right option and then proceed. So since I'm using DDNS, it's gonna ask me to enter in my host name here. So this is where you would enter that DDNS host name. But if you're using the public IP address, then you wouldn't have to uh, fill this out. You're then going to be prompted that the server keys are going to be generated. You can select OK here, and then you're going to be asked uh, to set up unattended upgrades. Generally, you should leave this enabled unless you have a good reason not to, but I assume if you did, you would know not to set this up. Uh, so for the majority of people, you're going to leave enabled uh, unattended upgrades. So restart your Raspberry Pi, and the OpenVPN setup is now fully complete. So as soon as you finish rebooting it, what we have to do is we have to go in and create a profile. So VPN profiles are how you will have users access your local network through your VPN. So generally, I name the profile by the person's name who will be connecting to it, but you can really make this whatever you want. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and you're gonna type in the uh, command PyVPN add. It's then gonna ask you for a name for the client, uh, how many days the certificate should last, 1080 is fine. You're going to then enter in a password and then you're going to confirm that password but after that the openvpn profile will be created so what you can do is you can navigate to the ovpns folder and you're going to see all of the profiles that you created now you need to figure out a way to get this off of your raspberry pi generally you don't want to email this file if you can avoid it that's what you want to do um, what I normally do is I pop a uh, external USB stick into my Raspberry Pi and then I uh, mount a folder to it and then I move the file to it. So as you can see, it's a few commands. Basically what you're doing is you're going through and you're finding the device name. You're then creating a folder where you can mount that device to and then you're mounting the device. And at that point you can copy the file from that OVPNs folder to that device. Now, when you take that USB stick out and you put it into a different device, whether it's a computer or whatever you're using, you will be able to access that file. That is probably the safest way of doing it. But like I said, if you, you know, feel like you need to, uh, to email this, you can do that as well. So the next step that we have to do is we have to port forward UDP port 1194 on our router to our Raspberry Pi. So if you change that port, if you're using something other than UDP 1194, you have to make sure that you use that uh, port in your port forwarding. Now I'm not gonna show this because there are tons of different routers and it's different on every single router, but in the written instructions, I have a link um, to an article that will show you how you can port forward on various different uh, routers. So check those out, but if you have any specific questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out with that. So in summary, port forward UDP port 1194 to your Raspberry Pi. The final thing we're gonna go over is the two different types of VPNs that you can set up. So there's a split tunnel VPN and a full tunnel VPN. A split tunnel VPN will only route local traffic to your VPN. So basically what that means is if you're trying to navigate to a local resource, it will only send that traffic through that VPN. If you're trying to access like google.com, it's going to go directly to the internet. So this is good for situations where you only want to access your local resources using your VPN, but you want to access all other resources using the network that you're currently connected to. Now, it's important to note that if you're on a public Wi-Fi and you're trying to secure your internet connection, you have to use a full tunnel VPN. So a full tunnel VPN routes all of your traffic through that VPN. So the easiest way of thinking about this is if you go to google.com, Google is going to view you in a split tunnel VPN connection like you are on the network that you're currently connected to. So your external IP address will be the network that you're currently connected to. In a full tunnel VPN, it will show to google.com like you are going through your home network. So it will appear as if you are at your house even though you're not. So that's the important distinction. Now, OpenVPN, the profile by default is configured as a full tunnel VPN. If you want to make this into a split tunnel VPN or you want to have both, what you can do is you can edit the file and you can add two lines to that config file, which will pretty much just tell it to only route traffic through this VPN if it's trying to navigate to an IP address that is in this range. 
So it's important to note that you have to update the IP address where I have 192.168.1.0 with your local network's IP range. So that might be 192.168.0.0, or if you've changed it, it could be something else. But this is pretty much just telling it to only route traffic to these IP addresses through your VPN gateway. Now you can have two different VPN profiles. So with that config file, if you wanted to create a full tunnel VPN profile, you would just leave it as default and you can copy it over, create a second profile, add these two lines, and then you'd have a split tunnel VPN. So I generally have two different VPN uh, connection types in my OpenVPN setup. I have a full tunnel and I have a split tunnel. And based on the scenario, I use either or. So at that point, you're gonna add that uh, configuration file to your client device. So that could be your cell phone, that could be a laptop, whatever you're using to try and access your local network, you can add that profile to. And then what you have to do is you have to download the OpenVPN client uh, software for that device, and it's different for each device, but you'll then import that profile, which is the OVPN file, and then you'll log in with that password that you created. So I'm not gonna go through that because there's you know various different devices that you can connect from, but you're pretty much just downloading the software, you are importing that file, and then you're able to connect. Now you have to connect from an external network. So if you're testing this out, use your cell phone, for example, um, download the OpenVPN app, import that profile, and after you add the password and you try and connect, assuming you're on your mobile network, you should be able to access your local resources at that time. That's pretty much the best and easiest way to test. Um, like I said earlier, obviously any questions that you have, please leave them in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. I'm hopeful that um, this kind of summarized everything quickly and efficiently, hopefully. But that wraps up the tutorial for today. If this helped you out, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. So as always, thanks a lot for watching.